In the quiet and foggy early morning hours of April 9th, 1940, the German Navy advanced on Norway with the intention of capturing its major population centers. This included the capital city of Oslo, where the Germans intended to capture the king and his government, effectively seizing control of the country. However, Oslo lies in the inlet known as the Oslofjord. To reach it, the Kriegsmarine would have to pass through Troback Narrows. The Germans knew that taking Oslo would be a difficult task, so they sent the Blücher, an Admiral Hipper class heavy cruiser, to serve as the flagship of the flotilla assigned to the Oslo invasion the largest and strongest flotilla participating in the attack on Norway. The Germans planned their offensive around four armed forts that sentineled the fjord, but it would be a fifth fort, one the Germans hadn't paid any mind to because it was merely a training facility that would change the course of the invasion and Norway's stance in the war within literal minutes. The German Kriegsmarine had the element of surprise on their side as they set sail on the evening of April 8th. The flotilla set for Oslo was the strongest of the entire Norway invasion, consisting of the Blücher, the heavy cruiser Lutso, the light cruiser Emden, three Type 23 torpedo boats and eight R-Type minesweepers. Veiled by a dense fog, they approached the Oslo fjord in the middle of the night. But the fog wasn't thick enough to conceal them completely, and some Norwegian patrol boats, along with searchlights from the fjord's two outer forts, spotted them. Uncertain if the ships were friend or foe, the Norwegians fired warning shots at the incoming flotilla, which kept moving as if nothing had happened. To avoid giving themselves away, the Germans did not respond to the warning shots. The longer the Norwegians failed to identify them, the greater their chance of reaching Oslo. The flotilla also shone bright lights at the Norwegian patrol boats to blind them and further delay identification. With their formation holding strong, the Germans moved to the next phase of their plan. First, four minesweepers turned back to capture the two out of forts. Next, a torpedo boat and two minesweepers went to capture Horten, which was the Norwegian Navy's primary base. The rest of the flotilla, with the Blücher at the head, continued up the sound straight for that fifth fort, the one Germans hadn't considered a threat. The fort known as Oskarsborg Fortress was built in 1644. Between 1898 and 1901, a torpedo battery was constructed at the fortress. The Germans didn't learn about this until it was too late. The first consisted of three coastal batteries and a torpedo battery. The latter launched torpedoes from under the water, which was less common at the time. By the beginning of World War II, the fort was over 40 years old and was primarily used as a training facility. Despite its age, however, the fortress and its weaponry were in perfect working order. At the time of the German invasion, the fort was manned mostly by recruits who'd only been there about a week. Commanding Oskarsborg was 64-year-old Colonel Berger Eriksson, just six months away from retirement. After receiving word that an unidentified flotilla was heading in his direction, he ordered the torpedo battery to prepare for action. While they had three 11-inch Krupp guns, however, they only had the staff to man two of them. The flotilla was quickly approaching, and while one of the patrol boats had sent a message identifying the visitors as German, the message didn't reach Ericsson in time. He was forced to make a judgment call. Were they friend or foe? While his superiors gave him orders to fire warning shots first, he decided it was more likely the flotilla was German and gave the command to fire. When one of his officers asked if he was sure, Ericsson replied, either I will be decorated or I will be court-martialed. Fire. And with that, the battle had begun. One round was launched from each of the Krupp guns, firing at the Blücher from a distance of 2,000 yards. The first round hit the side of the ship near the aft mast, creating a fire on the midship. But not just any fire. The round exploded inside a magazine containing bombs and oil. With the oil feeding the flames, they were almost impossible to put out. The second round struck at the base of the ship's forward gun turrets, sparking another fire. The round also knocked out the ship's electricity, rendering its guns useless. 
Despite these initial successes, the Norwegians couldn't sustain fire because their undertrained staff couldn't load the guns fast enough. But the defenders had another trick up their sleeve. Coastal batteries, which ranged in size from two and a quarter to nearly six inch guns, opened fire from the fjord's eastern flank, taking out the Blücher's fire suppression and steering systems. If the Blücher's crewmen hadn't manually steered the vessel using the engines, she would have run aground. But the Norwegian forces weren't finished with the German flagship yet. Since the ship wasn't sinking, there was hope among the crew that she might still be saved. Too bad they didn't know that the Norwegians had torpedoes. As the Blücher passed the torpedo battery, two torpedoes were fired. They both struck the vessel, the first one hitting the forward turret and doing no real damage, and the second hitting her amidships, ripping open many of her bulkheads. Water rushed in, flooding the burning decks. As the Blücher fell apart, the Norwegians heard her crew speaking in German and singing the German national anthem. At 0435 in the morning, 15 minutes after Eriksen gave the order to fire and just 5 minutes after the torpedoes hit Blücher, a Norwegian minesweeper verified the flotilla's identity in a message that had gotten delayed in the Norwegian's poor communication channels. Had Eriksen chosen to wait for confirmation of the flotilla's identity and fired warning shots as he was told, the German plan would have succeeded. With the Blücher sinking, the crew was ordered to abandon ship, which met the bottom of the bay a couple hours later. Some 1200 made it to shore alive. Those who were not injured or dying were taken to a nearby farm by the Norwegians and placed under a light watch. With the flagship now under the waves, the rest of the flotilla could either retreat or face the same fate. While Norwegian guns hit some of the other ships, they all escaped the fjord. Unfortunately, this didn't spell the end of Germany's invasion of Norway. The Germans returned several hours later to take the capital by air instead of sea. Even though Norway would eventually surrender to Germany, the Battle of Drobak Sound significantly impacted Norway's place in the war. Due to Eriksen's boldness and the legendary defense of the soldiers manning the seemingly obsolete fort, the king and government had time to escape and ultimately lead Norwegian resistance until they fled to Britain two months later. As for Eriksen, he was awarded War Cross with Sword for his actions. But what do you think? Would you have made the same call as Eriksen, or would you have waited for the flotilla to be identified? Are there any other naval battles that changed the course of the war that you know of? Please let us know down in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you learned something new.